We ready to roll? <sighs> <laughs> Broadcasting live from the internet, it's Tuesday night, and this is the Panels on Pages podcast. Big boys playing with big toys. This is quality content. The boomers are into it. Hey, man, I just show up. With your host, Lee Rodriguez. Uh, I am a visionary. Like, oh, you have a podcast? I'm like, no, no, that's not me. That's nobody else. Jason Nyes. Yeah, sure. I'm not getting any vegetables in my diet. I'm just a thick boy. Jose Guzman. Is Jose on the show tonight? He says he's coming. It's like Elton John all over again. Just minus the death threats. Kelly Harris. Reach your hand in your pants there, big boy. That's not me. I don't sound like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and our good buddy Mahoney. Hey, Mahoney's here. What's up, Mahoney? We can do just glorious, wonderful things on our phones, people. No one's ever done anything like this before. It's going to be massive. It's going to be great. I mean, obviously, I think it'll be great. And it's all killer, no filler. My seat's on fire. You take so hot. Come on. It's so good. It's pretty good. It's there. It's reliable. You know what you're getting every single time. Man, I'm so glad you found us. You're all terrible people, and I'm glad you're my friend. <laughs> What's that <in> the intro? <laughs> That's really funny. Over 500 episodes, and you'd think they'd have the hang of it by now. It seems like the concept that would run its course very quickly. Fuck, that felt long, right? <laughs> I felt like that took a really long time. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Whew, all right. Uh, what's happening? Tuesday, December the 5th, 2023. And this is episode number 646. Of the panels on pages podcast, I am your host, the Lord Reverend Lee Rodriguez. Joining me tonight, we got Mr. Jason Nice, Source <laughs> Kelly Harris. Lee, have you considered <laughs> that time is moving slower for you? And Mahoney's here. What's up, Mahoney? Did you guys hear that dubstep? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> Missed you, a hole. <laughs> I, I, I. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah, it's Please been a say minute. Skrillex three times. Oh, no. Then he shows up, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, last week we were out because the boys had a show. The week before that, we were all about to grow. We were, we were locked, you, cocked, you ready to go. You might say the boys are back in town. Yeah. <laughs> but... Our uh, platform we used to record the calls decided they wanted to like, charge us money for it. And we're like, oh, that's bullshit. We're not going to do that. And we spent like a solid 15, 20 minutes trying to, you know, get together a solution. So, okay, well, we're going to call it. Let's think about what we're going to use to replace it and all this and that, what we can do. All this conversation is happening via Facebook Messenger. And then at one point, I don't remember who, one of us was like, how about fucking this <laughs> <laughs> it definitely wasn't me <laughs> <laughs> and like, we have been trying to solve a problem with the solution <laughs> yeah all of us on facebook messenger being like what is a software we can use to all talk to each other at the same time hmm. <laughs> someday they'll come up with something well, if it's any okay. consolation, I completely forgot to start streaming. So that first bit was recorded, but not streaming. So welcome to the show, ah. everybody. Hey, it's hey. all good. <sighs> they know what's up. They'll forgive us. They've heard the intro. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But now uh, it's been a couple weeks. Lots going on. Lots to talk about. Uh, Kelly Kelly got himself a hit list <laughs> this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, that's what happens, man. You go for a couple we, weeks. Yeah, we, exactly. Vibe the shit fuck start, out, man. Shit starts yeah. to stack up. Yeah. I was going to suggest to Kelly that we go back and do his full gear rants, but I think that's that right. day has passed. Yeah. No. I'll have a chance. I'm not as angry about MJF being MJF anymore. Right. Did you hear what he said about you? <laughs> What'd that bitch say? He said you eat band aids. God damn it. <laughs> That sounds like something he'd say. Yeah. Mahoney, and he's the I'm world sure, champ. The world champ knows. I'm sure you saw this, Mahoney, but George Santos is doing cameos now. <laughs> I did see that. Uh, I saw uh, him singing Taylor Swift songs on cameo. How long did you consider that $200 fee 
to get George Santos to tell Kelly to stop eating band-aids. I mean, it was comp day today. I did make a <laughs> substantial chunk of change. <laughs> it would be a funny bit, but also people shouldn't be giving that asshole money. No, that was anything. my thing. Is I was like, yeah. can we please stop being like, well, you're a horrible human being, but LOL. we will exploit you for comedy. Yeah, you here's know? $200, like, <laughs> LOL, dunked on you. Yeah. Yeah, right. This guy said he's a fucking he eats fart sandwiches for two hundred dollars. Uh huh. Wait, wait. Uh, I God, showed him. <laughs> Dumbasses. I'd say I eat fart sandwiches for far cheaper. <laughs> Put that in the intro. <laughs> Put that in the intro, future me. <laughs> Mark it. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, we haven't. I realized uh, just today that we haven't really talked since Thanksgiving. Even it's been forever. But yeah, uh, that was fun. It was cool and uneventful. But my my wife's sister and her family moved here last summer, and so this is their first like holiday here, and they decided they wanted to go. They were going to go home, so they were going to visit the fam up north, and they want they were going for eight days. Oh, and I. Told eight them. Crazy like, nights. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, why are you doing this? Like, you, like, I'm telling you from personal experience, you want to be there for two and a half days tops. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Also, they want you there for two and a half days tops. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no. No, no. They were all about it because they're fucking freak shows. Like, they were all very excited <laughs> to have them there for a very long time. But also, like, not only were they going for too long, but they were changing base camp. So like they were gonna what? spend three days at uh, uh, her husband's parents and then like leave midweek and then go stay at her mom's house and I'm like that's just no goddamn you people love making things as hard as possible don't you like I swear to God it's genetic like it's I've never seen anything like it no like, like if if I check into a hotel and they don't have the room that I want. And they're like, okay, well, you can just move into this room, and then when we got the new room for you, you can move to that room. I'm like, no. Nope. Once I've nested, I'm done. Put me yeah, in the I'm room I'm going to be in. And yeah, imagine, yeah. imagine that, but also two kids. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Fucking, it's, you're out of your mind. Like, the I don't, company's no. paying for it. Well, about two days in, got a, you know, the text messages just got more and more frantic. <laughs> so... <laughs> I told him this goes down in the uh, Lee was right Hall of Fame. I fucking told you people, <laughs> oh, never again, hell yeah. never again. I'm like, yeah, I know, you fucking dummies, dumb dumbs. But with Thanksgiving uh, came the fucking elf. Do you guys still fuck with the elf, Mahoney? Hate the elf. Yeah. Uh, I did you see man, you came on an elf? No, the, the the elf comes on Thanksgiving. He comes out. The elf the, comes. That's when he, <laughs> he does. Comes all over your turkey leftovers. That's why I gotta make sure you have uh -huh. as much as possible. Oh shit. And if you don't know, that's cause he's stealthy. <laughs> but I was having a real hard I'm having a hard time with it because like it's just I'm it's been ten years. I'm so fucking done with it. Luckily, Zoe's gotten into it this year. She's been in some pretty creative shit, like, which is cool because I just don't have it. So I really thought that like, you know. Jax is my Jax is nine years old. He's nine. He's clever. He's smart. And I'm like, I know you got to be fucking thinking there's some, there's. Uh, uh -huh. I want the jig to be up so bad. Yeah, like, I want yeah. it to be up. But for whatever reason, he's still super into it. He's very excited about it, and all Santa and elf and shit like that. And I was kind of commiserating to a friend of mine, and she said the most genius thing I've ever heard. She said. That this year, her elf got married and retired. <laughs> and, I, and I said, what the fuck did you just say to me? And she said, yeah. He said, they went and got, they bought another elf and took some photos of them, like, hanging out together. And the elf wrote them a letter and said that he's enjoyed taking care of their family, but he's going to retire and start a fucking family. And I'm like, you... Beautiful, brilliant son of a bitch. Like, what? That's the greatest thing I ever heard. And I tell this to my lovely wife, and she's like, no. And I'm like, you never let me do anything I want to do. <laughs> you never let me do what I want to do. I mean, another easy way to get out of it 
is just to be like, AIDS? All right, well, you're you're you don't need the elf anymore. You're you're a good kid. The elf doesn't need to keep an eye on you anymore, so he's gonna go keep an eye on some other thug ass kids. Wait, who are we giving <laughs> AIDS? The elf. Everybody, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit, it's Philadelphia all over again. Bruce Springsteen, get over here, you're getting AIDS. <laughs> yeah, just the longest time. The longest time. And it's gonna it's gonna happen. I I kind of am on the fence about whether we'll even make it all the way to this Christmas, but uh, we'll see. But I'm the only one that wants it to be over. Well, definitely don't let on that you want it to be over. Yeah, because that means they're going to do it forever. Yeah, they'll dig their Mm -hmm. little elf heels in. Oh, well, no. I mean, hell, I can't really say I want it to be over without spilling the beans. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I can't do that. It's the worst thing because there's not a, like you think like oh I'll just move it around every night. There's not that many places to move it to. <laughs> there just isn't. Well, also you know Nicole made the be- set the precedent that like he didn't just move around. He did shit. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. We you know, you, we made sure to not do that. You got to create tableaus. Yeah, which nope. luckily, like I said, Zoe's been having a good time with it because I'm over it. I'm so fucking over it. <laughs> like that. You know these fucking assholes put this thing together and they put a Christmas tradition on the box. They just made that shit up and they <laughs> signed me up for 10 years of arts and crafts and it's bullshit. <laughs> like, it's not alright. <laughs> they, they didn't show you that there was actually a little hidden question mark. A, 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 Christmas, a, a tradition? Christmas tradition? Mm-hmm. Like the Santa Claus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By buying this, you consent to it being a Christmas tradition from here on out. Horrible. It is wild how just out of the blue one day it was like, oh yeah, you all are responsible for this elf now. And then my sister-in-law used to bring it out a day early. Like, she would bring it out so that it was there on Thanksgiving instead of, like, the day after Thanksgiving Like, you don't have whatever. enough shit to do on Thanksgiving? Like, what do you do? Right. Yeah. And, then I'd be, and then we'd be like, well, shit, ours needs to be there because when we go to her house for Thanksgiving, like, the elf is out. So we, we gotta have our elf out. And I'm like, we're all in this together. Ugh. We can't be like making shit up as we go along. Like, it's the worst. This is the worst. Katie's Dumb. in on it this year, and I was like, Dumb "Good, you can move it around." Me. She has not moved it around one time. <laughs> <laughs> I got. Uh, I went and I looked them through, and I, I found the photo because I actually took a picture of Zoe as she was basically coming together and, and figuring it out and connecting the dots. It is such a dramatic fucking... Her her whole everything is just like... She just found out the sun was going to go supernova in three and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, she's just so despair. This despair. But she got over it. I just... I want to just, you know... I don't know. You, know, you don't want to pop the bubble, but I really want someone else to do it. Like, tomorrow would be great. But... <laughs> Ooh, uh, you fine. could do like um, was the the Hitchcock movie where they kill each other's wives? A per uh, <laughs> uh, dial M for murder. Yeah. <sighs> Cut his head off and put it in a box. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know. Oh God, the Christmas Strangler got him. <laughs> Tell your <laughs> friends to look out. <laughs> Nonsense. I'm sorry if the audio is going in and out. The you know, we're trying something new, and, and it's taking control of Audacity again. Every time I talk, the audio goes up and down. Well, sounds fine to me. Uh, okay. All right. We'll, gotta figure it. we'll figure it out. Or not. Uh-oh. What was that? That was a just a, a system sound of me changing the Oh, volume. okay. <laughs> I'm like, did, <laughs> did, we, did we piss it off? <laughs> the house that was just exploded. Definitely... Yeah. Hey, we didn't, we didn't hear anything. Stop it. (laughs) 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 Silly billies. That's all I got, man. What's going on, nice? (laughs) All right. So we got, we did MJ BizCon, aka WeedCon, last week in Vegas. Uh, And uh, did some pretty fine videos for yourself, boys. Looking pretty slick. Oh, Oh, yeah. Destiny did that. She, Destiny did that? Yeah, Destiny pulled up our Instagram at one point and said, "Bro, your last post is from 2021. Like, let me, let me, let me hook it up." And I'm like, "Here's the login. Go nuts." 
So yeah, she yeah, shot those like came out really good. Yeah, I was I was super impressed. So we're gonna sit down seriously at some point and talk about it. So yeah, check out yeah, our uh, eleventh hour Instagram. And see, uh, yeah, Destiny's fine work. See uh, the boys in action. So you know, a lot of a lot of anxiety leading into a, a big show like this, especially because it's it's a lot of anticipation. You know, the, and the show is technically only four days, and my saying is you know once once that show opens you can't stop it there's no stopping it there's no pause it just keeps going until it's over so you better get what you can get when you can get it and you know you got to deal with problems as they come and try not to make a scene on fifth avenue right or eighth avenue (laughs) whatever (laughs) avenue don't make a scene (laughs) any avenue and but i was i was at peace i felt good you know had my bags packed like days in advance had the schedule all ready to go you know executive producing this thing like a motherfucker and then it it was literally Murphy's Law like everything that could go wrong went wrong so the first thing was we had uh, our third camera guy Harley driving in from Los Angeles and uh, he did the same thing last year and his car not the not the newest car, and the drive from L.A. while, you know, not super long, it's not brisk either, and it's you know across fucking massive deserts. We fucking land, me and Mary, we land in Vegas, and I reconnect my phone after turning off airplane mode like a sucker, and one of the first messages is Harley saying, <coughs> "Pardon me, I got the sniffles a little bit." Harley saying, "Uh." Bad news. My car broke down right before the Nevada state line. Oh, no. Oh. I'm like, oh, shit. But but also, because we were in the air, like, not only did I get the first message that was like, oh, shit, bad news, but I also got the three subsequent messages where it's like, all right, got it handled on my way in a rental car. <laughs> it's like, holy shit, that's cool. The So the the extra layer on top of that was Jose had a job in LA the weekend beforehand, met up with Harley to hang out, and was like, hey, Harley, do me a favor, put my gearbox in your trunk so that I don't have to fly with it. So at one point, Harley was broken down on the side of the road in Nevada with Jose's Steadicam in his trunk. Oh, (laughs) God. Yeah, like that's extra stressful. This is this is when I land. So like I'm su- I should have just told the pilot just fucking take me back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turn it Round around, trip, please. Yeah, let's go. Sir, please find the tallest tower you can plow into it. <laughs> oh my god. Uh I'm I'm trying to think of other terrible things that went wrong. Uh one of the big ones was Mary got immediately sick and she was going to be running interviews for us like she did at Toy Fair. Immediately sick. Just like day one of the actual show at lunchtime, I could see her start to collapse. And I said, you know what? You need to go back to the hotel and peace out. And we will try this again tomorrow because I could see I could see it on your face. It's not going to be good. And, and we'll all do better if you're rested tomorrow and, and we can knock yeah. this all out. So sent her off and, and we, we covered her. We covered her for that day. Uh, told the client, you know, we're not going to be doing many, many testimonials today. Mary's sick. Sent her back. But even then, we still were able to uh, slap together a testimonial real quick with, with uh, the B team for interviews. Uh, at The, the boys request. team. So it was it, it it was it was good kind of rising to the moment. Here's about to say, yeah, here's something real shitty. Essentially, yeah, and you and you and you got it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, we had kind of reset our camera settings prior to Toy Fair to kind of maximize, minimize the file size, and also minimize the kind of work we have to do to the clips after the fact, uh, color correction, all that. Uh, and we had talked this over the three of us beforehand and I just assumed the okay 
I, I'm getting into too many details, but we there's a function in the camera that bakes in like a color correction to your footage. And I just assumed, because it was one of three options, that it was something everybody had on their cameras. We get on site. Oh, Harley opens his camera. And he's like, hey, I don't have that LUT. And I'm like, oh, shit. I guess we got to update your fucking firmware. So I go to the Blackmagic <laughs> website, day one of the show, downloading the most recent firmware for a Blackmagic camera, and I click download, and it's like, okay, this will be done in an hour and a half. I'm like, all right. Well, I guess I guess we'll just roll out with no LUTs on Harley's camera for now, and then hopefully we'll be able to get it hooked up and updated. And, like, Mary and I had to go uh, over to another hotel to shoot some stuff. And while we were over there, they got that shit updated and running good and working fine. So another problem solved, another fire put out. And then, yeah, like I'm, I'm clenching on all these stories. I'm like, oh wait, this has a happy ending too. Hell yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, the, the whole time I'm like, it's all good. It's all good. We got this. We got this. Because I had, I had said to myself, and I've been saying to myself for months. I'm like, you know, no disrespect to our generous clients, but none of this fucking matters. I'm not, yeah, gonna get my blood pressure up over some bullshit. I'm definitely not going to let my fucking wife be in tears because she's sick at a fucking weed convention and can't ask people stupid <laughs> questions. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I, it comes from something you said a while ago, Mahoney, about uh, your uh, your company's culture. You know, no, no. Yeah, uh, they manufacture urgency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you're yeah. not a fucking paramedic. Right, right. You're you're not literally trying to save lives. In in the grand scheme of things, we're shooting video at a weed convention exactly. for marketing purposes, not for a fucking film festival, not for a documentary, for disposable marketing materials. So then, once you once you realize that, it becomes so easy. At one point, I texted everybody. I said. This shit is so fucking easy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that comes with the experience. Like, you get used to it, and you start yeah. to realize these things, and you're just like, what am I doing? And, and it's we, all, like, routine and, and gets so much easier. We had rebounded from so many setbacks that it was like, fucking, fucking bring it. What do you got? What do you got for us? What do you got for us? Yeah. To the point where, uh, Har so Harley got a renter car, but then he had to get back to the Nevada state line to drop off his rent a car and pick up his fixed car, which had to replace its transmission. It was like oh 1700 oh bucks. But even then like replacing a transmission on the fly like that, I feel like he got off easy. But so this was the plan. <laughs> this was the plan before I stepped in. He was like, yeah, I'm going to have to leave at three in the morning on Sunday Go to the Nevada state line, drop off my rental car, take an Uber to the mechanics, pick up my car to get back here in time for the show to open. The, the Well, sorry, it was Friday, the last day of the show. I, I always confuse it with Sunday because, you know, that's just traditionally. What yeah, that I'm feels like the to. last day. Yeah, that's so that's that's a lot of steps. So I said, how about this? How about Sunday? Or fr Friday, you just fucking go. Like, we can handle this. Don't drive to the state line and then drive back for the literally on the last day of the show. The show is open from 10 to 3. And you, you, oh guys, my God. Yeah. you guys know what that means, right? Yeah. Right. What does Everybody's that mean? Everybody's gone. Yeah. Everybody's packing up. That means the show Nobody is open from 11 to 12. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like you better get what you need. Like that that's what I was saying. I I had planned all week to where we're not trying to pick anything up on the last day. It's all gravy on the last day. It's all extra. We've already got our shot list. We've already gotten all the panels, all the testimonials, all that shit. So we're not rushing around on the last day. And even with all the setbacks and and sending a camera guy home a day early, it worked out that way. Uh fucking A. Lee and Kelly, you would be so proud. Uh, 
So Destiny and her husband Zulfikar came and joined us. And they hit the floor so hard. The fucking pile of loot they came Hell back yeah. to the ho- hotel with. They gave me a pile. Just like rolling <laughs> trays, 10 different kinds of blunt wraps and joint wraps and all kinds of shit. They were straight up wheeling and dealing and rubbing elbows. Zulfiker showed his app to Mike Tyson at one point. Oh, they, we, that's fucking awesome. We gave them video team badges and they said, peace. We, we will see you guys when we're fucking billionaires. And I said, all right, I will ride those <laughs> coattails. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so that was cool. That's fucking great. And yeah, uh, they they hung out with us for a little bit, and Destiny put together a little behind the scenes video. Nice. She's like, "Yeah, you guys shouldn't have to do this." Like, and I said, "Yeah, like uh, the last thing I want to do after shooting a bu- shooting a bunch of video and editing it is sh- is editing a bunch of video, you know?" Yeah. Anyhow, uh, of you shooting video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a good time. Uh, we missed you, Lee. We hit up that Indian restaurant again. And uh, service uh, uh, worse than ever, but the food is still right. (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit. Uh, We ran into that a lot is the service was just kind of piss poor. And I feel like, you know, they had a bunch of strikes lately with their hospitality. So I think maybe maybe the fucking the workers won and they're just chilling. And you know what? No disrespect. But also, can I get the fucking check, please? I just want to yeah. leave. <laughs> we are uh, checking out at the Indian place, and there were seven of us. It was me, Mary, Jose, Harley, Travis, Zulfikar, and Destiny. And I'm we're checking out at the Indian place, and I Wait, look down, and I see... Travis? Yeah, we brought Travis again. All right. right Trav- on, Trav. MJ BizCon is Travis's show, man. All right. Hell yeah. I wasn't sure if he would if he would be into it enough to go back or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, good. He doesn't really dig on Vegas or weed much, but he enjoys the trip. I guess he likes good. busting Jose's balls whenever he gets a chance. Uh, well, I mean, you know. So I look at the receipt, and it says eighteen percent gratuity already included. I'm like, huh? Glad I saw that. That makes sense. Uh, and then I was like, you know what? They gave us exactly eighteen percent worth of worth of work tonight so that's that's plenty and then i'm like oh shit there were seven of us at sushi last night i don't think i paid attention to the receipt as much i think i might have fucking double tipped them and then i'm just like oh you know i'm never going back and looking at that receipt (laughs) let's just pretend that i didn't oh did i lose that hell even if you did whatever exactly yeah whatever um And then I had hoped that Jose would be here for this story because we we both experienced and it was a very Jose moment I had. I Jose'd myself. Been there. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, we're hanging out the front entrance of the hotel as we do because we're uh, ah goddamn just dropped my headphones. (laughs) I glued my fucking eyes shut. I thought he got attacked by a spider or something. I'm a fucking mess. Like, my headphones weren't working, and then they fell. You were like, I really wish Jose was here, and then you channeled your inner Jose, and it was like he was here. (sighs) So, we're hanging outside. Possibly smoking a joint, or 12. And just hanging out, having a good time, enjoying ourselves. Enjoying... The company of family and friends. And in case you guys don't know, concurrently with MJ BizCon, aka WeedCon, they have programming for this event called Remind, which is psychedelics, aka mushrooms. So we're standing that there. That is a hell of a weekend in Vegas. Holy yeah. shit. We're standing there uh, smoking a joint, and I see this guy walk up. Trilby hat, nice trimmed snowy white beard. He's got like Santa? a what? Santa? He was very Santa esque. <laughs> he was wearing like a crossbody bag, and then a shirt with just a big old hippie like psychedelic mushroom on it. 
as he's passing us. So he's coming from like the hotel entrance, like going to walk elsewhere, going to another hotel, another casino, wherever. And as he's walking towards us, I spot him. I lock eyes with him. I see his shirt and I say, we need to party with this guy. And that's <laughs> when I made the mistake. I invited oh. him in. Oh, no. We would <laughs> learn to know that he is known as Motormouth Mike the Mushroom Man, a.k.a. <laughs> Motormouth <laughs> Malcolm in the Middle, a.k.a. whatever, whatever. M M M M M. And this guy, <laughs> he, he didn't quite have a tight five. He was uh, doing his 45-minute TED Talk for us in the round. <laughs> but, like, oh you know, God. like, mushroom person TED Talk. <laughs> but also, uh, not just mushroom person TED Talk. Like, mushrooms changed my life three years ago TED Talk. <laughs> so he's got a lot. He's got a lot to talk about. He, he called himself a prophet. Uh, oh, my. Yeah, he... It, it, it was it was all good spirited, but at po at some points a little confrontational. And, and it, <laughs> if if I could have I could, well I mean I saw everybody else besides me I'm sure I could see me as well. But as time went on and we all realized we weren't getting rid of him, and also he wasn't handing out any sort of mushrooms, are just. <laughs> Our demeanor just sunk. All of us just started just visibly getting annoyed with him. <laughs> and at one point, Destiny mouthed something to me. She she mouthed your people at me. <laughs> and and he kind of caught it and he was like, All right, well, that's 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 my sign that I've worn out my welcome, so I will bid you adieu, a little little doff of the cap here. And as he starts making his way in the direction that he was going originally, you know, he, he was leaving. He was leaving the hotel. He starts to leave again. He stops. He turns around and goes, you know what? I'm going to bed. <laughs> in the hotel? He's he, uh, implying he's going back to his hotel room and going to bed. Oh, okay. I thought you meant he turned back around spirit. and laid down in your room. No, this is this is my theory. He just wanted someone to notice him, someone to pay attention to him, and I was the sucker. Yeah, yeah. He was just looking for kind. some people to 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 preach to, and we were the ones. We were the fucking ones. And as soon as he left, I I said to everybody, "I go, yeah, that one's on me. That was definitely <laughs> on me." But I thought there was a good chance. Because you're not supposed to give out free samples at MJ BizCon or at the Remind function. But people are definitely giving out free samples. And if somebody's giving out free yeah. mushroom samples, I will take it now. I'm not going to take it in front of you, but I will put it in my pocket for later, maybe. But then again, maybe I don't want to be what? taken. If you got to listen to a fucking TED Talk for it, maybe it might be worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... The next morning, the last day, Friday, of the show, they got the cool three-dimensional logo out front, outside. Yeah, everybody does that now. Toy Fair even had it. C2E2, all that. Yeah, you know, for photo ops. So I'm shooting a, a time lapse of kind of the, the, the sun moving across the logo. Real artsy shit. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I'm looking through my, my viewfinder. And I'm looking... And motherfucker, here comes Motormouth Mike walking through oh, my no. shot. So no. I try and get, I try and get as small as possible. And he's like, no, no way, he notices me. No way, no way. He gets it, it something out of a fucking movie. I, it was a time lapse, so I don't know how well it's gonna come out you know, on screen. But he literally gets to the the edge of the frame, stops, <laughs> and turns, <laughs> and, at me, and he points. And he goes, Jason. I'm like, you're right. Uh, uh, the night before as he was leaving, I said, we will never forget you, Motormouth Mike. That's for sure. And, you know, that's a nice thing to say to somebody. E yeah. Even if yeah. there's, even if there's a. Uh... Even if it's not for good reasons. Right, 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 right. 
but like we'll always remember it but it definitely felt like a jose moment like making friends with fucking randos but if it was jose he would have come back to the room with us (laughs) (laughs) but they would have had that story that you shared and a bunch of ones that you were not privy to yeah yeah uh, so uh, we know that Jose is addicted to roulette, right? Yes. yes. So we were put at a different hotel this year, which was actually connected to the convention center, which was so fucking convenient uh, and and probably added to a lot of the ease of the whole show, just being able to walk over there every morning. Was it still in the, the dagger convention hall? The, the, the oh, the no, that too. It was not in that one. I hated that so much. It was it was night and day compared to last year. Good. So, you know, he, Jose had a roulette machine over at the old hotel at the Sahara, and he hadn't been over to the Westgate yet. And he's looking around. He gets there and he he does recon. He's like, no roulette. I'm like, it's fine, man. It's fine. Like, Sahara's just one monorail stop down. We'll we'll head down there whenever you need to. And then also, like, like they don't have a fucking roulette table at every. Casino? Well, like, they have a roulette table, but they don't have they didn't have the electronic roulette, which he likes. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. But that same night, we're headed back to the room, and there's like velvet ropes and like newly unboxed machines on the casino floor, and it's eight big setups for video roulette that they're currently working on putting together and programming. Oh shit. So like, oh shit, we might have roulette by by tomorrow. So it was every day coming down from the hotel and walking to the convention center. We got to walk past the roulette tables and just kind of check on their progress. And every day it was oh. little by little. I was like, not yet. Not. So he had to learn craps in the meantime. And I shit you not, they had them motherfuckers open Friday night, the last night we were there. And we played so much roulette. It was fun. <laughs> I only lost like eighty dollars. Nice. I'm surprised he likes the video one and not just an actual roulette table. There's well, the video ones you can like save your bets and rebet and shit yeah. like that. Yeah, that, like, uh, there's a there's a few things. It's usually with the video ones, it's a lower minimum bet. Like the the okay, actual okay. table, you're looking at ten dollar minimum bet every every round. Whereas the video gotcha. is three bucks. And like Lee said, with the video. Your minimum is three bucks, but you can split that three dollars across the board in fifty cent increments, and kind of uh, put it across four here or across two here, or and like and like he said, you don't have to physically put your money back on the table every time, kind of thing. So it's cool that way, and also fuck people, man. I don't want to talk to anybody. True, right? <laughs> True. <laughs> but yeah, he got his roulette. Uh, yeah, ate some good food. Fucking Mary watched a shitload of HGTV on the hotel TV. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we're both still. She's got the worst of it, and I kind of got it on the way home. But we're still coming down off of our con crud. But uh, which hers was fucking pre con crud, which is even worse. Yeah. Oh, I hate she when was you patient pre-con. zero. But it was a good show. I hate to say it. Because Toy Fair was a, such a well-oiled machine, but I I feel like Toy Fair prepped us for MJ BizCon and and got us on the right path, and I think they're just going to keep getting better, you guys. Nice. And I don't yeah. give a fuck. Throw anything at me. Oh God, that was a. You know you know what? <laughs> me I out thought you than... just regretted what you said. <laughs> you like you're like what have I done? You know what freaked me out more than anything is I woke up middle of the night Tuesday, which would have been the 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 day of the pre-show shit. So essentially the first day of the show. I wake up in the middle of the night with the same kind of pains I would get when I would have my diverticulitis flare ups. Oh no. Yeah. Oh. So that was that was cool. But then I took some Tylenol PM and by the morning it was gone. I was like thank oh, God. Oh good. I was like, am I going to have to instant message my doctor and get him to prescribe me antibiotics to a fucking Las <laughs> Vegas Walgreens? Is this what I've come to? 
And and at that point, I, mean, I wouldn't be telling you guys how great of a show it was. I'd be saying, <laughs> well, that was my last show. It was a good run, everybody. <laughs> uh, See you in hell. With uh, Destiny kind of cowboying our Instagram. <laughs> at one point, we were standing outside, and... Jose was just scrolling through our Instagram, just like, oh, remember this? Remember this? And just playing, like, <laughs> six-year-old videos for everybody. <laughs> like, oh, this is pretty good. Oh, this one's good. He Well, he was looking <laughs> for, like, the best Indian pizza he ever had. We were, we were talking about how there was such great pizza in India. It was weird. And we were trying to figure out what the name of that one pizza was. And it was Chicken Dominator. From Domino's. Oh. The chicken Domino's. Yeah, it was like four oh, different yeah. types of chicken, like cube chicken, chicken sausage, chicken nuggets, I think. Damn. All right. And then the only other thing I have to talk about, we watched the latest episode tonight, is The Curse on yeah. Showtime. Right. I got to get on that. It's on Showtime, but it's also on Paramount Plus streaming. It is... Nathan Fielder, everybody's favorite psycho, and Emma Stone, and uh, the both the Safdie brothers are involved, but one of them is one of the three main leads. He plays like a, a director, a reality show director, and it's Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone are an HGTV couple. Like they they're pitching a show, they're shooting a pilot for an HGTV show. About, uh, you know, sustainable living. Uh, they call them passive houses to where oh, no. it doesn't create any emissions. But they're essentially also gentrifying this New Mexico town sure. for, for these fucked up mirrored houses. And they seem nice enough, even though Nathan Fielder always seems like a weirdo. But as the episodes <laughs> yeah, go, that's just his face. The, I don't the, think it can help that the cracks start to show. Uh, I don't want to get too much too far into it. So they get cursed. <laughs> <laughs> Without telling you too much, they get cursed, and they're dealing with you know the reality show. They're dealing with HGTV. The fucking director's a weirdo. Uh, the the town is kind of uh, recoiling and fighting back against people kind of taking over the town uh it's like a horror movie every episode is like a horror movie that has no like gore jump scare like satisfying not, nothing actually scary happens nothing actually scary happens but it's it's that dread that dread is always there you you dread that something awful is going to happen but it never really does, but the cringe is almost as bad. There is a scene where the two characters, Emma Stone and Nathan Fielder, are trying to recreate a impromptu oh moment <laughs> for an Instagram video. Oh, God. I wanted to claw my fucking eyes out. It is <laughs> one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen in my life. Nathan I, Fielder I, I is say, one I, of I'm the... I'm into that because I, I've seen a lot of like horror movies lately where those types of people, like the influencers, the uh -huh. fucking whatever, like those people are phenomenal fodder. Yo, for, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This kind of shit. Because, like, you know, uh, it sounds like this is kind of the same thing, like watching these people and just reveling and then being such pieces of shit. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you really revel in it. <sighs> it's it's hard. It. it I would highly recommend it, and I would be fine if anyone I recommended it to came back to me and was like, that was fucking awful. I'd be like, hey, that's <laughs> on you. <laughs> this, the most recent episode has such an incredible ending where yeah. Nathan's character, Asher, is at like <laughs> some sort of like corporate comedy class. School. Yeah. Yes. It's basically improv class. Yeah. And it's like, and so it the ending bit is a guy, you know, everyone's sitting in a circle, and the guy who's running it goes, "All right, everyone, uh, you're going. What you're going to do is try to make the whole group laugh without saying anything." So then they go in a circle, and everyone's just doing whatever, 
and they get to Asher, and he just makes the most unfunny noise and face you've ever seen, and no one, no one laughs. No one does anything. And then it goes to the credits. The teacher but just goes the, next? Yes, and during the credits, you just hear everyone else getting a laugh reaction to whatever it is they do. <laughs> and then the guy is next, and you hear... Someone does something and ha 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 ha. And you oh, know he's brutal. just <laughs> sitting there stewing about how he couldn't make them laugh. That whole cold open with the director on episode four, you're like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Like, you got like some idea, but I'm like, what is happening? Like, what is, is this guy gonna die? <laughs> the scene in episode two where the director explains his drunk driving incident. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's one of the most upsetting scenes. Yeah. It really I've ever seen. It really kind of defines the character. And well, yeah, the the comedy of the well, well corporate comedy school is because focus groups ragged on him nathan fielder's character oh, as being unfunny school yeah yeah the, the, they don't think he's oh. funny they don't think he's relatable they think he they should get rid of him so like the hgtv execs are like yeah let's see some more of that fun asher you know and he's like he's so cringe as she says that he's doing like air guitar in the background <laughs> he he mutes the phone at one point and and what does he say Oh, I don't even remember. It 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 was like a um Austin Powers quote or something. Just so fucking cringe. <laughs> but yeah. If you ever wanted to see uh Nathan Fielder finger Emma Stone to completion, <laughs> just watch the first episode. <laughs> I mean, I'd watch that. that. If that's on your list of things you want to see. That's the first thing you said that sounds appealing. <laughs> uh, there's a scene in the last episode with Emma Stone. She's she's walking. I fucking love Emma Stone. And, and you're watching an actress act as a real person who is in turn putting on this outward act. And it's like, it's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> But so great. Yeah, she's really good in this. I will... I'm going to have to go back and watch all of Nathan for you. I will... I'm signed yeah. up for anything he does in the future. Uh, he's a he's an Andy Kaufman. Yes. Thank all you right. so much, I love the, the, the story with... Um, I'm fucking... I'm, I'm, I'm getting it right now. <laughs> Where one of the Jonas brothers saw him at a bar and sent him a drink, and he sent him back a cup of mayo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and they've been going, crazy. they've been going on the talk show circuit, Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone, and he's been putting on this like method actor character in the interviews and kind of talking <laughs> shit about Emma Stone being a a fucking shitty actor. Oh my god. <laughs> He's gone like full Johnny Depp kind of. Oh, that's so good. What a weirdo. <laughs> it's not <laughs> for everybody. What a magnificent weirdo. It is definitely not for everybody. But Kelly likes it. Oh, I yeah. like it. You might like it. Oh, I'm probably going to like it. I'm yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. You're you're I'm into well, weird shit these days. It's weird. It's weird shit. It is. Yeah. It'll have you on the edge of your seat. But, like, yeah, not because that. there's actual suspense. Just, just Right, there's no stakes. <laughs> right. I mean, there are, but it's not based on that. In my opinion. Yeah, no, it's just building to something. You but, know something awful is going to happen, but not in the traditional, traditional horror sense. Right, it's yeah. It's going it to be might... something deeply embarrassing for everyone involved yeah it, something horrible might not happen but that's fine like it's already it's accomplishing its goal yeah
Okay. All right. I'm in. I fucking He's can't wait. Super cool. You got him when you said Emma Stone gets fingered. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, mm. I'll watch anybody get fingered for a second. <laughs> Look, it's, I, I will warn you, it is not sexy in any way. Mm-mm. Oh, Mm-mm. I bet it's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's not why I said I'd watch it. <laughs> this is so us, Kelly. It really is. <laughs> Remember when Mahoney told us he doesn't remember the rehearsal? <laughs> that, <laughs> vaguely, vaguely remember. That it. fucking blew my mind, man. Like that is some shit I will never forget. Yeah, that that show will stay with me forever. <laughs> and I don't know if it's because of Nathan for you and the rehearsal that I'm constantly looking for what the hook is. <laughs> yeah, when's the twist come? Yeah, but like I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think there's a hook or a twist. It this is it. This is the hook and the twist. Yeah. I didn't going into it, I had no idea that he was like writing and directing it all too. Same, yeah. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. And it's shot yeah, man. almost voyeuristically. Yeah. I mean they, they even kind of set it up early on where the director's a, a piece of shit. And he he puts a lav mic on Nathan Fielder's character, and he goes out to like give some some people some money or whatever. And it's very covert, like shooting from the doorway of a van. But that's also way the way almost the whole show is shot. Like somebody's just kind of hiding in the room with them, and they don't realize it. Interesting. All right. Now I'm way in. If I can make get one of those, then maybe after the show, we'll see what happens. Kelly, you have I'm any big... idea how long or how many episodes it's supposed to be? I don't actually, because we're at what four now? Yeah, it could be anything. <laughs> yeah, they could just be like that was the final episode. Pretty much, <laughs> you're like, oh, oh, okay. We're at a weird time where I'm f- I like have suddenly a bunch of shows to watch mm-hmm. after just having nothing for a long time. It's like <laughs> Invincible came out, I still haven't watched any of that. Monarch is coming out, I've been watching that and it's all kind of just okay. Uh Scott Pilgrim dropped, I watched all that. That was really good. Yeah, Zoe really Zoe love that one. Looks like The Curse is going to be 10 episodes. Okay. Okay. I'll take it. We, did we finished the curse. Uh, Twisted Metal the other day, and it's actually a lot of fun. You know, I have become... I, I've always liked Samoa Joe, but I've become such a Samoa Joe fan lately that I've wanted to watch Twisted Metal just because of him. It's a lot of fun. It's real silly, but it's 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 a blast. No, I think you're like... Oh, Anthony yeah. Mackie's great. It's uh, Stephanie Beatriz from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Mm-hmm. She's in it. Fucking... Um, oh, I didn't know she was in that. Yeah, she's like the second lead. She's phenomenal. Nice. Uh, and um, fucking Thomas Hayden Church is like the villain. It's Sandman. It's wild. Was he actually yeah. on set? Every day, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's always there. We but didn't get to... the metal do this weird thing where like, like the the opening sequence is they're having the, he's having a big car fight in a mall, you know. So they're and they're clearly. In a building on set, with like you know, the the cars are all rigged up with guns, and there's rockets and explosions and shit. Like it's a big, big, big set piece, you know. And there are you know several of those throughout the series. It's fucking twisted metal, after all, you know. So they have these big sequences, you know, with you know, and they're they're obviously on set. Crazy shits happening, and then they'll have a shot that's just like you know a landscape, and the fucking car has got to be going fast, and it's clearly a PS3 animated car. Very odd. Like, they couldn't just fucking get a drone and film the car driving down the highway. They had to animate it in later. It was very weird. Like, that's the only part that really kind of makes me, takes me out of it because it makes no fucking sense. <laughs> like, you have all these cars and all these crazy stunts, and they're like, eh, it can be a cartoon driving from A to B. <laughs> Speaking of cars doing crazy stunts, oh, I want to talk right. about that Furiosa trailer real fast. I didn't realize that was Hemsworth. I didn't realize that either, actually. Oh, yeah, because he's got the crazy fucking nose on, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
I but thought there, they just got some other yoked Viking. <laughs> there is a lot of CGI in that trailer, and uh, that bums me out. Mm. Uh, yeah, I have not like, seen it, but that is very unfortunate because Fury Road Fury is like Road all is practical, famously all practical, right? Yeah, yeah. and Furiosa like very clearly is a lot of CG. And so, like, I don't yeah. know. It'll probably be a cool movie, but that's already kind of a big knock against it. Is it? Yeah, that kind of sucks. Is it George Miller or is it Matthew Vaughn? I that I don't know. Is I assumed it, it was George Miller, Miller just because it's Mad Max, but shit, it might not be. Because I would, I I would be. Why would George Miller be like, yeah, let's go CGI this time? Yeah, yeah director know, George me... Miller. Who yeah. knows? M- maybe it's just the trailer. Maybe, maybe it'll be legit. Yeah, I'm hoping because Fury Road is one of my favorite movies, like ever. Mm-hmm. Wasn't without CGI, but no, did not but... rely on it. No. So yeah, so that that was a slight bit disappointing. I'm hope I hope it ends up being cool though. It can't be that bad. <laughs> it may be that kind of CGI that you just don't notice. Well, I already noticed it. <laughs> but you know, kind of speaking of weird Squint. CGI choices, you know, Kelly called out. They put up that very weird Kong Godzilla team up where they fight in the Hollow Earth. They put that trailer out like three days after Godzilla minus one came out mm. and fucking cartoon Kong and Godzilla may as well have fist bumped in that fucking sequel. It was yeah. so dumb looking. So silly. They straight up just running like people. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> just a couple of uncles. I fully expected them to just jump into a giant monster sized car and drive it off. So fucking silly. Hey, high five, yeah, slam dunk much. a basketball, and then punch <laughs> a butterfly. I saw someone on Twitter took the bits of the trailer and cut it to the boys are back in town. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if that had been the real trailer, I would be so in. <laughs> yeah, but Godzilla's female, right? Who the fuck even knows? <laughs> I thought you would know, but... No, because no, they never officially say anything. He he might be both. Who knows? Yeah, asexual. Yeah. yeah Godzilla hanging dong. I've never seen it. That's yeah, what that tail that's is. <laughs> I feel like the only way to answer this is for them to show us Godzilla fucking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucking King Godzilla Kong. Fucking Kong. <laughs> now we couldn't get King George Kong Washington... fingers Godzilla to completion. <laughs> we couldn't get George Washington with tits, but could we get King Kong fingers Godzilla to completion? <laughs> it'd probably be easier i've still been trying <laughs> i still haven't got it yet it's it's really like the white whale at this point yeah 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 i want like, it so once bad. we find it i might get a tattoo of george washington with tits <laughs> <laughs> fucking nonsense but yeah fucking speaking of that godzilla movie you guys it's so good incredible it's so fucking movie. good you guys saw this so in theaters? In yes. theaters. Yes. And they didn't show the trailer for the new one before. They no, they that hadn't come out yet. That's wild. I got the sense they weren't related. They're well, not. I mean, they aren't. They got Godzilla, Godzilla, but if you're yeah, trying fair. to promote a movie, right? Yeah. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. But I think I'm going to go only on got a limb like... and say these are for different audiences. <laughs> yeah. I only got like two trailers before. My showing. Did you see Nicole Kidman? No, I don't yep. go to those theaters. Uh, she, was, she was there. I've heard they adjusted it now so that when she says, when the lights start to dim, the lights start to dim. What? That did not happen, which is really good, because I would have lost my goddamn mind. <laughs> That's cool. I saw a trailer no, it's not for... not cool! Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Just All right, Neither of you have, 
Just you guys little, haven't seen it yet. Just a little fucking landmine I dropped in the popcast chat just now. Whoa. <laughs> oh, wow. That was a lot easier to find oh than George God. Washington with tits. Wow. Just got the that bottom taken, one. Taking back shots. <laughs> that Real bottom aggressive. one is something else. And he puts his Patreon on there, too. <laughs> oh, I found, I found uh, George Washington with tits. What? It is not good. <laughs> I see, but I want AI to do it. Oh, oh that's my a, that's God. A, that, why is that racist? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Does it say Papa on his it chest? Says, it says Papa on his D- chest. Uh, I really hate oh. that. That's upsetting in it what's with the volcano in the background and also when i'm looking at my messenger and the, like miss minutes is winking at it it's very upsetting and the bird on his shoulder look at this everybody look at this art blackface titty volcano bird george washington is this ai or is it a painting i don't know man i no, just did I think google image search some real disturbed art i think oh god why did i Te- heart it. <laughs> Get that reaction out of there. Oh my god. Oh, it's horrific. part of your algorithm now. Oh no. Mark Zuckerberg is th- is like this freak likes George Washington in blackface with tits. I'm gonna get a phone call from him. <laughs> Zuck says, Me too, Kelly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like one of the oh, only trailers bros. I got before Godzilla was for some space station movie where the Russian scientists and the American scientists start fighting and the music yeah. they used for the trailer was the Scorpions. Yeah. What? Which Scorpion Bizarre song? A- Winds of Change? Um, shit, it might have been. Scorpions are Maybe. the shit. But, yeah, so they're on the space station and from the space station they can see, like, you know, nuclear war on the earth like they're watching shit go down and they're like oh the american government says we should kill the russian guys and you had to imagine the russian guys have got the same message so we're gonna try to kill you on the space station and i'm just like if that's the case and you're like the last eight people who gives a fuck just hang out and bang <laughs> like, yeah, come on. Really. like what are you doing really think i give a fuck no <laughs> Yeah, it looks real bad. Real stupid. But I, I did see the trailer for The Boy and the Heron, and it looks pretty fucking cool, actually. Ah, uh, that's... I, we didn't get that one. I think... Actually, now that I think about it, I think we only got that Space Station movie trailer. That sucks. Well, that's fine. That means you got to fucking watch it sooner, because we had a whole bunch of bullshit in front of ours. Yeah. Including fucking Nicole Kidman. But it's so good. Like, this is the first time I've ever seen a Godzilla movie and not been, like, just impatiently tapping my foot waiting for the <laughs> human shit to be over. Like, it's so good. Like, Lee's like, where are the Muppets? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's, there's always some element of that when you're watching the Godzilla movie or any kaiju movie. But, nah, it's it's wonderful. The fucking the story is great. The effects are great. Um, It looks incredible. It looks so good. He's, Godzilla is scary, but, like... So is the whole damn world they're in, because it's about a a kamikaze pilot in like the the last days of World War II, and on his way to his mission, this guy says, "Oh, he doesn't." He kind of loses heart and says, "The you know his plane's faulty," and so he goes to land. And the mechanics there are like, uh, "Hey, buddy, your plane seems fine." And he's like, "What the fuck are you trying to say? What are you implying here, buddy?" And like nothing. It's cool. And then that night, Godzilla shows up. But at this point, he's almost like a like a cryptid, like a local legend on this island. And he's an asshole. So, yeah, real asshole. But also, like, what? 20 feet tall? So, like, really big. Yeah. But not, like, gigantic, crazy, city-crushing monster big. He's the kind of big where Mahoney will look at him and be like, Oh, maybe. I was literally <laughs> thinking that. I was like, 20 feet tall? I could take him. <laughs> it's 
everybody dies except you know a couple of like you know the main dude and like a couple and one other dude and like that's kind of the theme of the movie is the most brutal and gripping PTSD and survivor's guilt I've ever seen in a movie probably ever and it's a Godzilla yeah. movie like it's yeah. this crazy you know psychological study on this character and it's also got a big crazy monster in it it's, it's so good how fucking cool would it be if Christopher Nolan made Oppenheimer and then secretly also made a Godzilla movie that is kind of a <laughs> sequel but not really huh <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> well, they show the, the Bikini Atoll test. Well, they, not a test. They fucking blew up a bomb. But, like, for a second? And, and that's what, you know, jacked him up and made him Gigano Godzilla. Uh-huh. But they don't really talk about it. They just show you for a minute. And if right. you're not paying attention, it's so funny. Mahoney would never notice because he wouldn't have been looking at the screen. And then just gigantic Godzilla would have showed up in a, 10 minutes. He'd be like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> Like, it makes you feel any better. Like a plot hole. I was listening to a book on tape the other day, and I got about halfway through it before I realized that half of the book was taking place in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I, that is one thing about the curse is it is very dialogue heavy. It's not a whole lot of action going on. See, so you, you, but there's also not a whole lot of plot intricacies you need to keep track of. But, sure. But the more you pay attention to it, the more you'll en- enjoy it or hate it. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> or hate it. Enjoy right? hating it. <laughs> we have to watch an starts... episode of Bob's Burgers after we watch The Curse just to cleanse the palate. <laughs> palate cleanser. Yeah. Yeah. But man, the first time Godzilla really fucks up a city, there's this great sequence where there's this. Uh, uh, a bunch of reporters and they're standing on a rooftop. Oh, and God. Yeah. It, and they're just describing what's happening, what we're seeing, and Godzilla turns around, and the guy's like, "Oh, he's heading this way, and this and that." And like, and he just casually kind of like he doesn't even hip check the building. He just doesn't go out of his way to not crush the building, and just kind of like takes out a chunk of it with his hip, his big fucking Godzilla birthing hips as he's going uh, as he's going through down the street. And the building just kind of starts to collapse in on itself, and you watch these fucking dudes like try to scurry, and it's, it's so brutal, absolutely brutal. The scene where he picks up the train and puts it in his mouth like he's a doggy, and you can <laughs> see from inside the train as they're like yes. struggling to not fall to their deaths. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and he just straight up just smushes people in this fucking thing, like so many people. And that the tail is a goddamn menace. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> so bad. And his... Godzilla is just. This is the one time I've ever watched a Godzilla movie and been like, man, I hope they kill that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a fucking asshole this dude is. Because he but hates everyone. He's gonna kill all of you because he can. Yeah, it's he's just an unbelievable i have I, you don't want to see force of nature because it feels personal you That's know the thing. yes he doesn't feel like a per, like a force of nature here he feels like legitimately and not even i don't even know if it's evil it's just so shitty <laughs> yeah objectively shitty because you know you kind of get the feeling that he could go anywhere <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's just choosing to fuck up these people who've already been <laughs> fucked up enough. Like, there's one scene where, like, a uh, Godzilla warning goes over the radio or something, and everyone's like, what? And then you just see, like, a train car come flying by. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's here. But they, they, use this, they use the setting really, really well, because it's at this shitty period in the years following the war where, like, after, as it's a known issue that we've got a Godzilla problem, like, the Japanese government's in no position to do anything. The American government won't help. And so it's just like a handful of, like, you know, World War II vets, fucking survivors, and, like, a couple of shitty boats they managed to clean, you know, clean together, and they got to try to stop Godzilla. It's so good. It's so good. Because it's not 
every other Godzilla movie where you're just watching the government people react and do their thing and go fucking fight Godzilla. They're fucking off doing something else. Yeah. Like, the way I described it is that the the stakes are big because it's still a Godzilla movie, you know, and he's still going to fucking destroy the whole city or whatever. But the stakes are also super, super small and hyper-focused on this dude and his little found family. It's tremendous. So good. And uh, over the past week, I watched the uh, trilogy of Always Sunset on Third Street movies that the director did. And it's amazing how much of that first movie is in Godzilla Minus One. Really? Like, it's the ent- like the whole found family thing. That is all in that movie. And, like, huh. the main the main character who becomes the like the uh, the surrogate father essentially is the guy who makes the plan to stop Godzilla in minus 1. Oh, the old dude, the old scientist dude? Yeah. Oh, right on. Okay. He's not actually that old. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he just has they just gave him gray hair and he looks way older that way. And what are they called? Uh it's always Sunset on 3rd Street. Okay. It's about a bar. Uh, Danny DeVito's in it. <laughs> well, I will watch that. They're, the movies are really good. The third one's a real pain in the ass <laughs> to find. I had to ask my friend to <laughs> track it down for me. And the the subtitles are not great, but they do the job. But yeah, and the, and the second movie, the opening sequence to that is essentially a minus one prototype. Like, the opening scene is just a mini Godzilla movie with Godzilla attacking the Ginza district. No shit. And it's just kind of, it looks like the minus one Godzilla. Huh. Like, it's, it, this cool. was, it was him just being like, hey, can I do this? And then shit, he made a Godzilla movie. <laughs> That's cool. He made it's a movie really awesome. snuck in an audition tape in there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Love it. And then That's it's great. just like shit. Like here, I'll find the link and we'll, I'll send it to Nyes real fast. And then the thing is too, like I, I saw a couple of people talk about how they made this thing for the equivalent of like fifteen million American dollars. Yeah. And it's... Which on one hand is incredible and shows how much our budgets are overblown, but also shows how undervalued the work of Japanese movie people are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely both. Because, yeah, f- there needs to be a better in-between between American and Japanese budgets. But, like... Yes. The fact that this movie looks like it does for $15 million is absurd. I saw you it, guys talking about that. It uh, looks incredible. Like, there's... Maybe one scene in the whole movie where I'm like, ah, eh, the CGI there doesn't look great. But, like, everywhere else, spot on. I saw someone comment, like, yeah, you know, it is it is cool that this $15 million movie has CGI that looks as good as, you know, some Hollywood movies these days. But let me tell you about the working conditions in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. You think the Spider Verse editors aren't getting any rest? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that is the downside to it. So it's like there needs to be a middle ground. But yeah, it's it's so good. It's one of my favorite Godzilla movies now. Uh, I'm really hoping we get more because they did leave it in a place where I think there could be sequels. Oh, yeah, he always comes back. He's like Jason. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He always comes back. Particularly in this movie. He is kind of, yeah, he is like Jason in this movie. Yeah, yeah, the one dude said that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where he's just the fucking worst and just here to kill all the teens. I don't want to spoil anything, but I really do kind of love their plan at the end. The plan is so good. It's a great, it's such... It's sciencey bullshit that you can absolutely get on board with, and like as they're talking about it, you're like, "Fuck, this might work." And like <laughs> visually, it looks enough like 
the oxygen destroyer from the from the original movie. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Which is also like, you know, one of like a million cool little throwbacks they do. It's very yeah. cool, but very subtle as well. Yeah. Nice. Can you bring up that YouTube video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I had it up. You just want to watch the whole thing? Yeah. All right, let's fucking do it. Yeah, it, it's just pretty much the minus it? one prototype. I can see it. Nice. And yeah, this is just how the second movie in the Always trilogy starts. Where suddenly we're, we're here with a, uh, a monster attack going on, and the family from the first movie is just... Be having to run away now mind you <laughs> okay the first movie pretty grounded <laughs> zero <laughs> sign that there would be a kind of a monster attack <laughs> and, so, and suddenly this is how the next one opens it's just like what the hell oh wouldn't it be so fucking cool if like you know because you hear they're making another one of those born identity movies like what if the beginning of the born identity seven or whatever like Matt Damon's run away from a kaiju out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, yes! That'd be awesome. Just, you don't tell anybody it's not in the, in the marketing promotions or anything. Just go sit down and suddenly it's Jason Bourne versus Gamera or some shit. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, there goes Tokyo Tower, which is a big part of the first movie and how it being put up is like a big accomplishment for Japan and their rebuild and stuff like that. So. You've even got horrible asshole Godzilla in this movie, too. Yeah, like, oh, that's pretty cool. Be a shame yeah. if something happened to it. <laughs> yeah. And now he's seeing that his business was destroyed by Godzilla. Oh, he's going to Arthur Fist Godzilla so hard. Oh, he's going Goku. <laughs> what the fuck and is like, this movie? <laughs> and, like, it looks... It, oh, yeah, like, look at that. Yeah. That's just pretty much a prototype minus one Godzilla. Damn, she thick. <laughs> oh, she real thick. And it's like in this whole scene, like that's exactly where the big destruction scene in the first Godzilla yeah. was. And yeah, then you just awesome. then you find out that the main ca character of this movie is a writer, and he was just writing a story about G Godzilla. Or a creature like Godzilla attacking, and then... Real his... sneaky there, bud. Real yeah. sneaky. I see what you did yeah. there. <laughs> and the guy writing, that's who the the guy who came up with the plan was. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Oh, that Godzilla minus one is so spiky. Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. And when he charges up the atomic breath, the spikes, like, jump up. They're like protrude like stab out of his back it's so gnarly looking like fucking doom and then like, and then when he shoots out the beam like they all kind of shrunk back into him like it's a oh. detonator yeah that's cool and then it blows like it's like a small concentrated beam then it just stops and a fucking mushroom cloud blows out of the center like like he's just spitting out a bombs it's crazy looking yeah boys what's stopping you from looking like this <laughs> that's not much that, these days. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah exactly. <laughs> Give me another winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's peak form right there. Low center of gravity. Yeah, one pandemic away from Godzilla minus one. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I can't wait until it comes out in streaming. I really want to see it again. Yeah, it's real good. So what else is on your hit list, Kelly? Uh, we got to talk about Marvel Snap and the big update from today. Oh, yeah. Fucking time for Snapchat, y'all. Yep. <laughs> Tell us about your Snapchat, Kelly. Uh, today's Snapchat, we're talking about all the nerfs they did. Uh, number one, for America Chavez. <laughs> Went from being... Doing? A 6-9, like she costs 6, nice. 9 power. Your And her power is you always draw her on the 6th turn, which is your final turn in the game. So it's like she's a, she's a powerhouse card that you, if she's in your deck, you always draw her at the end just in case you need her. You Guaranteed a, a win in the last round, essentially. Not necessarily. Yeah. No. No, there are definitely well, ways to counter. A guaranteed powerful card. Okay. 
Yes. Yeah, there you go. Tricked you nice. <laughs> and so what they did was now she is, what is it, a 2-3? Hang on, I'm scrolling. Yeah, 2-3, and then she bumps up the next card. You've got 3 or something. Yeah. Which, that's just an entirely new card at that point. <laughs> And like I guess it gives her some synergy with Shaw that came out today, but it still fucking sucks. It does, but the thing with that is there's so much RNG there where it's like Shaw would have to be the next card you on your deck, which Yes. That's a crapshoot. Yeah. No, they I mean it's all a crapshoot, but like I, like you said, it's a brand new thing. And between that and the the Elsa Bloodstone nerf they did fucked up my favorite deck. And maybe that's why. I was running yeah. fools of this thing. And maybe they decided that I was winning too much and other people were winning too much with it. But it's not like I saw it a whole lot. But I used to run her. Away. Well, I still do, but now I'm going to take her out. I have her in my destroy deck, which was perfect because I could just have her in a lane boosting up all the ones where it's like, all right, here's three lambs to the slaughter. <laughs> and then here comes the guy to kill everybody. Yeah, but no, not no more. It's, nope. But I still might be able to bounce Kitty with her. Might still work. Yeah. Uh, Luke Cage took a hit where instead yeah, no, that's of... bullshit because that's a that's a big one too that I use a lot. Yeah, Luke Cage is essentially useless. Like he's nearly useless now. Where before you would play Luke Cage and then all of your cards would not be able to have their power lowered at all, and now it only applies to one of the three areas. So it's yeah. like that He's takes away a useless. lot of his usability. <laughs> yeah. And really kneecaps the deck I mainly used him in. Yeah. Because you could use the counter. Like I use a counterbalance like a, like a Typhoid Mary or something like that. You know, you bring up, you drop a Shiri, and then you drop Typhoid Mary. That's 22. And then also it doesn't take, out, take away your shit. Mm -mm. Good stuff. Yeah. Then I hit a, hit a Baron Z, uh, or Arnim Zola, rather. So two Marys up, all that power with no consequence. Can't do that no more. You fucks. Fucks, I says. Yeah. Today, I just discovered there's a Stegron card, which makes me very happy. But also, I don't have it, and now I need it. All right. I, got I a am pitch. very surprised yeah. that you don't have that. Mm -hmm. Great. I got a pitch. There's a lot of random cards that come out where I'm just like, what the fuck? Why don't I have this yet? <laughs> How do you get them? You kind of just unlock them as you go. Oh, okay. You play enough times. You you get enough achievements. Yeah, that kind of stuff. And like oh, the season Lee. pass every month, like you you buy the season pass for ten bucks and you're guaranteed at least one of the new cards. But oh. Lee, I got it's great. such a good a good variant today. It's Wolverine laying in bed looking at that picture. Oh no shit. Yup. That's awesome. I saw that and I paid real money to the game because <laughs> I was like, I fucking need this because it was just in like the random nine for the day one. I'm yeah, like, I need two hundred gold to pay for this. I need it right now because <laughs> if I don't do that, I'm never going to see this variant again. Oh yeah, there it is. Look at that. Oh, that's so good. It's so good. It's 2023. I just got back from Vegas. They have, what, five games in the history of gambling in casinos? Like, Pretty how, much. How, Pretty is yeah, there, basically. how is there not a turn-by-turn -turn based RPG game that you can bet on? Or like Pokemon mm -hmm. that you could bet on? Hmm. I'm listening. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hmm. Card games, you know, yeah. stat, a, a, a deck of cards. Why does it have to be kings and queens and jacks and bullshit? Why couldn't it be fucking, yeah. you know, elves and dragons and swords and stuff? Man, if it was like this, I'd be, I'd be all right or in a lot of trouble. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> because you can slap, you know, Marvel superheroes onto a a slot machine but it's still a slot machine which is honestly 
I don't get how people do slot machines because I put $20 no. in a slot machine and it was like, how fast do I want to lose this $20? Yeah. Like if Basically I just hand them $20 and go, do I get anything back? If I like take a break between each spin, it'll last longer, but uh, it's still going. I have no ability contr to control my fate whatsoever with a slot machine. And when you, and because like the digital ones, they, they will like, match you up like nine different ways or whatever so that even when you do win something you don't really know what the fuck happened right mm -hmm. like you know when it was just three in a row you're like okay i got three in a row that means i won but there's like you know three columns three rows and you, you know it'll come back and like a zigzag fucking z shows up it's like hey you won 15 cents and you're like how why what yeah <laughs> <laughs> but imagine you could play like a dealer at marvel snap like, I'm thinking about it, buddy. You play yeah. the house. <laughs> and you could have just a table full of dudes with screens. And the dealer's yep. just like, all right, I uh, I choose you, Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, bro. I guess, okay, I guess the reason is you don't want to entice kids to gamble. Yeah, probably. I mean, don't you, though? But it would also entice adults to gamble. <laughs> Last time I was at Vegas, I saw somebody play penny slots. Okay. They put $5 in. Okay. They won $3.50, but it took so long to count up the 350 <laughs> that they were, like, all excited. Like, fuck yeah. I was like, you just lost $1.50. <laughs> like, penny slots I get more just because, yeah, you can put five dollars in and sit there for five hours yeah if you're truly trying to kill time now last time nicole and i were in vegas we saw a woman hit a slot machine for like twenty six thousand dollars jesus jesus Christ. she was wow. losing her fucking mind i bet but, yeah but it's one of those things where like i was yeah you know, and you can't help but it, it lifts your heart like fucking go good for you you know but then you're like how much has she put into it hmm <laughs> How long was she there? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, not like, yeah, you know, I, I didn't watch her sit down, put in a 20, and hit 22 grand. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I was there at the end of the story, you know, which is a happy ending, you think. Pretty sure it's a happy ending, you know? Or did she just break even? Her, her husband and family already went home two days ago. <laughs> yeah. This will win. This will get them back, right? No, fucking wild. Vegas is crazy, y'all. It is. Uh, we wanted to hit a dispensary to get some gummies for the non-smokers, and I went searching for something that was close but not too close because, you know, the area we're staying in, you know, you step across the street and you're in the hood. So you, you go you go a little further out into, like, the suburbs of Las Vegas if you want to uh, go find a dispensary. And I looked this one up. It looked pretty chill. It was like, like Indian themed uh, luxury dispensary. I didn't really. I looked at the reviews. They were good. The pictures didn't seem anything out of the ordinary. I was like, oh, cool. The, their prices look decent. But what it turned out to be was fucking dispensary hooters. <laughs> what? We walk in and it's just fucking techno music blaring. Neon green lights and 10 chicks in short shorts and tank tops behind the counter. Hell yeah. And I, I was like, I, I swear to God, I didn't pick this place because of this. I had no idea. <laughs> uh, no one believed you. Travis you're was not, like, you're not walking out because of it. Travis did one of those moments where he's looking around. He's like, there's a lot of nice looking women here. <laughs> We joked about going to Guy Fieri's again and getting the trash can nachos just to oh see if God. Travis would go. I've never seen that before. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, two other. Sorry, sorry. Two other things about no. Vegas that I remembered while we were talking. One other Murphy's Law thing that happened midday. I believe it was day two, first official day of the show. Actually. I get a text. Oh no! Okay, this was this was day three. I get a message from Jose. It says, "Steady cam broke." <laughs> oh god! 
So what previously we were worried that the steady cam wasn't going to get there. He's now saying it fucking broke. I'm like, broke, broke. But then like he fucking rallied, cobbled that shit back together and it was working just fine. It, uh, we kept joking that at the end of the show, it was going to fall apart like the blues mobile at the end of the blues brothers. <laughs> just like all the fucking screws and pins pop out and it just turns to dust like Thanos. And then w- one last story. So y- you guys know when we do these shows, we try to keep an ear out for special surprise celebrity guests. We're always checking the yeah. phone. So if somebody's letting us know somebody's on the floor, so like Tyson was there, they let us know Tyson was there. We went and got Tyson. Uh, Exhibit was there again. They let us know Exhibit was there. We went and got Exhibit. I'm shooting a bunch of social equity and diversity panels one day, and this final town hall panel starts, and they introduce this guy. I shit you not. Martin Luther King the Third. What? On earth? What? Oh, Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No one prior to me being in this session room where this is happening mentioned anything about Martin Luther King Jr. 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 being at MJ BizCon. But he fucking was. He fucking... Had a dream during a weed nap, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're all like, you know, people are starstruck, but then we're also like, what? What does Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. do? Like, <laughs> like why? 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 But he's he's an activist, and he's also like a cannabis advocate. So fucking sure, yeah, good on you. Yeah, why not? That's wild. Yeah, Martin Luther King Jr. 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 <laughs> and it's you, you kind of have to sit back and think about how fucked up it is because you know there, there's that that it's not really a meme but people will post a, a picture of like a, a color photo of Martin Luther King Jr. and be like hey you know they like to show you in history books and newspapers they like to show you black and white photos of Martin Luther King Jr. but like there was color photography at the time. They do that to pretend that it was further back than it actually was. And right. like Martin Luther huh. King Jr. Jr. is an older man, but he's not by any means like about to die. So right. this man's father probably would not still be here today, but he would have been here for a while. His son is still still alive and kicking around. Huh. It's not. I've never history. thought about that before, but that's well, you can, almost certainly true. And you're doing the math, and it's like, okay, he's Martin Luther King yeah. III, so, and it was Martin Luther King Jr. So yeah, he's the direct descendant. And I'm here like, <laughs> weed con. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite story of the week, and I completely forgot about it. I should have made notes. All right, and it's directly related to Martin Luther King Jr. 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 <laughs> so uh, I shoot that panel, and then uh, we go back to grab that one testimonial that we needed since Mary wasn't there. So we roll in there three dudes deep, and the panel has ended, and, it, and everybody's kind of milling about talking, and, and we're trying to, to hit our moment. And this family on the side of the stage... Uh, has a lady in a wheelchair and Martin Luther King Jr. 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 is still on stage talking to people and the lady in the wheelchair pulls me aside you know assumes that I'm some sort of official because I got a little name tag on she says hey um, you think uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. will come down here and take a photo and I'm like I tell you what I will I will put in a word for you so I sneak my white ass up on stage so yeah it was a it was a social equity and diversity panel, a.k.a. 100% black panelists. So I go up there on the stage. Yeah. yeah. And I had... That's real diverse when you still get just one of another group. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had kind of spotted his security guard at one point because I was kind of shooting from the backstage. And I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense that Martha, Martin Luther King Jr.'s son would have a security guard. 
So yeah, probably all the fucking time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I would if it were me. <laughs> so I I sidle up to the security guard and I whisper in his ear and I says I, I I point to the family. I'm like, hey, this family was asking if they could get a photo with uh, Mr. King. Uh, you think you can make that happen? And he kind of gives me the nod and then he goes over to uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. Jr.'s handler, white woman, who's kind of directing traffic. And the security guard leans over to her, kind of whispers in her ear. She swings around, points directly at me, and goes, this man? <laughs> <laughs> like the security guard was like, oh, these folks over here would like a photo with uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And the first person she sees is white dude in a vest standing at the edge of the stage. Like, get the fuck out of here, white boy. And I fucking like jump scare. Well, she points at me and says, this man, I this fucking man? jump out of my shoes. I'm like, no, 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 thank you. I am not worthy. These folks over here, I'm just trying to trying to do a nice thing. Please. Don't mind me, ma'am. Just helping out and seeing myself out. <laughs> this man. It's like, Mr. Michael Moore would like a picture? <laughs> oh, my God. Take a number, white boy. <laughs> I can't believe I almost forgot this man. Mahoney. Tell us about the yeah. new members of your family. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So the other day, uh, Lisa's like, all right, I lined us up a sitter for Saturday. Very interesting, uh, this backstory. <laughs> figure out. For days. <laughs> figure out what we're doing. Like, plan a day. And she's like, maybe we get some lunch and we go see a movie or something. And I'm like, all right. Off she goes about her business. And then I'm like, you know what? Or uh, I call around to the various animal shelters in our neighbor, in our neck of the woods and get ourselves pre-approved and make an appointment. And so we went on last Saturday, I guess. You did this on purpose? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we went over to the place and they were like, here's all the cats we got. And we found two two great cats so now we have two new cats we came home with one saturday and then the other one he's got uh like extra toes and so he had this like in ingrown like nail that was infected and was a whole big problem so they had to get him a little surgery to fix that and then we're officially fostering him because we can't adopt him until he's medically cleared the place can't adopt him out until the vet clears him but he's he's home now too so they were going to keep him like locked up in a cage for two weeks to heal. And we were like, uh, he can just be alone in a bedroom in our house. <laughs> they're like, well, he can't jump. Like he can't climb on anything. He can't jump off of anything. And I was like, I will just carry my desk and chair out of my office and boom, it's flat. Well, all right. So, yeah. So now we got two cats. Nice. Uh, they're very sweet. They're like kitten was, if you remember, you know, not inclined to be touched or looked at by people. She was an old lady. Yeah, but these two are both pretty lovey. One's a kitten, Phoebe. They both had names, so Phoebe and Polly. Phoebe's a kitten, and she'll like run around. Polly's and be all a crazy. really good cat name. Right? And then, yeah, Polly's the one with the extra toes. He's got the surgery, but even with all that, he's just like, I just want to chill. I just want to mm. sit. Like, I was hanging out with him today because he's stuck alone in that room. And I was sitting next to him watching the that uh, Soprano sequel movie thing. Oh, wow. And he's just, like, laying in my lap, like, just like, <laughs> this is the best. It's like, this is exactly what I had in mind. And they keep talking about Polly. On the show. Yeah, exactly. I watched like all of the Sopranos in you know a week and a half with a cat named Polly. <laughs> That's amazing. I <laughs> wanted to watch walnuts. that Sopranos movie, but I wanted to rewatch the show first. And you you're lighting a fire under me. You definitely should. You definitely should. Because there are like scenes from the movie that are from the show like 
Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember when he flashes back to like one time his dad took him to his dad took Janice to the amusement park and not him. Uh huh. And he's telling the the uh, can... the doctor how like that really fucked him up and like how could he do that to him and like that scene plays out in the movie like you see that scene. But what's cool and I don't know if I they did this on about purpose. How I much I hated they did. fucking Janice in. <laughs> So long. Oh, I know, it's been I know, so right? long. The I thought know. about how much I hate fucking Janice. She's just the worst. So like God, in Janice sucks in the Sopranos when Tony's recounting the tale, like it plays out like one way. Uh huh. And in the movie when you're like watching it, like it's not Tony like saying like, "Hey, this is the thing that happened to me." Unreliable like it's narrator. slightly different, and it's like like he comes out looking a little bit worse. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I feel like that is intentional. Like, that's absolutely oh, on of purpose. Course, yeah. 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 No one's the villain of their own story. Not yeah. even Tony Soprano. <laughs> yep. So it's cool little touches like that. So, yeah, definitely watch it. I mean, it's really, there are only like 13 episode seasons. Some of them aren't even, some of them are like an hour and 13 minutes. Some of them aren't even the full hour. And then the last season was like 21 or something like that. So it was basically like a little bit less than two seasons. But I was through it in no time. Yeah, but that last season, if I remember correctly, was essentially released as two separate seasons over the course. Yeah, of, I that's think, that's years. how I remember, too. Yeah, <clears throat> I remember. Yeah, you know, I, I eventually got into Sopranos and got all the DVDs and watched all of them. But I remember going over to our friend's house. They had somehow unlocked their cable box to where they got all the fucking wrestling pay-per-views for free. Oh, that's the nice. best. I love that shit. You know, you know, that's that's when I like started watching ECW more often cuz we could. We could fucking any night we could go over and watch wrestling pay-per-views essentially. Except when it was Sopranos time, fucking wrestling goes off, Sopranos comes on. <laughs> we watch that whole Sopranos and then we can go back to wrestling. It's a great I mean, show. That's fair. Yeah, real good show. It was the man's house, you know. It's oh, you wild to, me. to see like the early two thousands now. Like, oh yeah, like it's really a time capsule. Mm-hmm. The conversations they have, the stuff they're talking about, like the state of the world, and then it's wild that like AJ by the end of the show. Oh my god, I can't stand to hear about AJ, but like he's like. The world just sucks. Everything's awful. He's talking about like 9-11 and the war in Iraq uh-huh. and Afghanistan. But it all could easily just be right now. COVID and right yeah. now. Like, it's yeah. all like, wow. Like, this is so cyclical. It's wild. Yeah. Yep. That checks out. Absolutely checks out. I, uh, you know, talking about time capsule. I had a moment today, and I didn't want to vocalize it because it has a, a creepy tinge to it, but it's not meant that way. It's uh, safe here. You're I right. I saw a news item that was showing that uh, the young actress who played X-23 in Logan is going to be in Deadpool 3. You know, they, they're making all these announcements of all these yeah. X-Men sure. characters that are going to be in Deadpool 3. But, like, she's grown up now. Yeah, she's, I'll bet. she's yeah. eighteen and hot, and I'm like, that movie yeah. came out like two years ago. What is going yeah, on? But no, yeah. it came out like, like five oh, years. Ago. It really, no, does feel it, like it just came out. Yeah, it definitely did not. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I saw a thing the other day that was like, somebody was like, I really like Hugh Jackman really made a big deal about being done with Wolverine after Logan. Like, it's really kind of amazing that they like got him back for Deadpool. And it's like, yeah, he just got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> like they waited for his wife to take half his shit and they were like you want to be wolverine again he's like guess so okay. good eye yeah <laughs> you got it bro. i don't know to what extent everybody's avoiding spoilers but there's been some leaked set footage and oh this movie looks like it's gonna be great like yeah, it, they, I hadn't heard X twenty three's coming back, but I have seen footage of a different X Men character that's in it, and uh-huh. it seems like they're, they're anybody alive who wants to put their old costume on. They're like, come on down. Yeah, that's Love that's it. every movie now that we gotta yeah. you you gotta live up to that standard, right? 
Yeah. Every movie has every incarnation of every character that was in that movie now. Yep. If you don't have it, what are you even making movies for? Basically. Your movie doesn't have a multiverse in it? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking wild. I'm so happy for you and your family, I, Mahoney, for the n- new souls in your lives. You know what? They're so very sweet. You know what extra befuddled. toes means, though? Uh, that I never would have imagined you'd been like, oh, yeah, no, I chose this. That's so weird to me. <laughs> so bizarre. <laughs> I it, it sounds weird at face value, but Mahoney is a cat person. Sure, that's yeah. I, right, I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. But you know what? You know what's funny, Lee? You're a cat person. I'm definitely not a cat person. Bro, uh, okay. <laughs> You're Are a cat you? person in the sense that if you put whiskers on you, you would be a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little tail or a collar. Um, Lee, feel if very you brave. Had to choose, <laughs> if you had to choose. Would you rather identify as a cat person or a dog person? Or let's not forget they previously had birds. Bird, bird person. person. Yeah, yeah it could be a bird person. I'm you could be a snake a guy. Person. Snake guy. Remember that guy? The mm-hmm. snakes and the pictures of himself on the wall at Christmas. <laughs> I, uh, honestly, I'd kind of have to know. I, I would need to know more about what the maintenance is on a snake. Like if I like if I have to have one, I don't know because yeah. Well, you do like want to be a to finger it to completion. Well, yeah, the best I feel like it's going to be a lot more work than you think it's going to be. Even the coolest cat shits in a box in your house. Right. Okay. Okay. But well, hang the on. Snake Let also me tell shits, you, but not just in like a litter box. You know. Let like, me tell you about the game change. So I I agreed to bring in one. I well, was I like, have a six hundred dollar get... robot litter box. I get it. Yeah. Like, I got it's the amazing best litter box, but still, it's amazing box of shit. You know. But, it, but you don't even have to do anything. Once a week, I go grab a trash bag out of the bottom of it, and I'm done. Yeah, I just, I don't know, man. I don't understand why people willingly put themselves in situations where they got to come into contact with something else's shit. I don't get it. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't have to come into contact with it. I, I basically take the trash out the same way I do any yeah. other trash bag. I'm going to look at it, and they're going to fucking, they scratch you, and they knock shit over with their tails. No, not these ones. These ones don't do anything yeah, like that, that. is that is the one aspect of cats that does not apply to Lee's personality is the knocking shit off of flat surfaces. Like they yeah. love it. Yeah. They love it so much. They fucking love it. Yeah, and that I, is. I put the a little. I set up Lee. a little, little gimmick downstairs with a. I made a little snow field downstairs, and I put the fucking Christmas caroling gremlins down there yeah. that look so dope. Those shithead cats. <laughs> Just <laughs> between the cats and Buster's dumbass, this wagon tail. I had to pick one of those gremlins up every day for a week. <laughs> okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Do you have proof that the pets have knocked these gremlins down? I watched it happen. Okay, okay. <laughs> because NECA gremlins don't NECA. have the most NECA. solid base on them, is what I'm yeah, saying. Not, not gremlins, yeah. yeah. But not only do they have bases under their feet, uh, but I also use some uh, uh, compounds to stiffen the joints and make them a little tighter. Nice. I'm doing my part, Jason Nice. <laughs> Come on, me with that bullshit. I just didn't want toys? you to be accusing the pets when it could have been a simple solution, all right? Sounds oh, like it's coming out of toys, solution. guys. That's what I heard, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> if I thought um, it would keep the cats from knocking them over, <laughs> I'd really think about it. <laughs> some homemade glue you're tossing on your toys. <laughs> I saw a post today. It was a video or a a still image or whatever. And it was somebody in the comments to a, to a woman on the internet being like, Oh, you'd be so much prettier with cum on your face. And the response being, okay, so I'm in a bar and then there's somebody (laughs) that looks just like me next to me with a face covered in cum. (laughs) Who are you more attracted to? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I got to say that one of them has a story to tell. That's for damn sure. <laughs> yeah, but which one would you be more likely to open mouth kiss? <laughs> yeah, this is this is very true. People people are not afraid to type anything into a comment section. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's wild. Gross. They'll just say anything. 
anything. Yep. The internet gave everyone a voice without deciding, without thinking about for a minute whether or not they deserved it. Mm-hmm. Most of them do not. I mean, what we've learned from the internet is that most of those people don't even deserve like photo IDs. Yeah. No, that's. <laughs> yeah. That's very. Very true. Like they should have oh, discounted they, secu- counts sec- as much as mine does. That's cool. They should have discounted social security numbers. Yeah. You get five numbers. <laughs> that way everybody knows right away. Yeah. And you share your social security number with your whole inbred family. Fuck it, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck not? Vote for me. I missed you, boys. Glad we're back. Glad we're back at it. We're back. So always a good time. I wanted to put this out there, and I'll also put this out there in the Discord. You know, around this time, we always do uh, uh, a movie commentary, a a, uh, a Christmassy movie of some sort. I think we need we need some ideas. So. Put some ideas out there in the Discord, and then maybe we'll have a vote or something as to what movie we're going to watch this Christmas. Yeah. You had us up on the Discord or on the, the X, whatever no, the fuck it is. No, Discord. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fucking come talking to us X. on X. You can zeet us. Send us a zeet. <laughs> yeah. I saw an interview. At us. Send a zeet. I saw an interview with Elon Musk where the interviewer used the the verb tweet and elon was like no 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 post and then he was like oh by the way i I'm, you know i'm not i'm not married to post so if if anybody has a good idea for a word to use for what we do on this site let me know i'm open to ideas motherfucker <laughs> you had one it was tweet and you ruined it <laughs> he just really Changed wanted to the name, name something of X. an application yeah, that's all it is. Like, never mind the fact that like it was named something that had become part of like language, right? And he's like, nah, really, like the okay. pinnacle of a name. Like, yeah, you you had made it. It was successful. Yeah. It's like, your word, yeah. right? Not you invented branding. a word, like, and all an of awesome the world name. was like, yes. It'll he always like, be Twitter. Hear me out, though. Fuck. X is a really cool letter. What a nerd. What he's, a fucking he's really nerd. Z. <laughs> just a I hope when nerd. he eventually runs himself into the ground that he does cameos and I can have him tell Kelly to stop eating band aids. Oh my God. You said <laughs> run himself into the ground. Have you seen some of those Cybertruck crash tests? Yeah. People are like, you're fucking done. You get in a crash in this thing. There's no crumple zones. You're fucking decapitated. The, the crash test. It's not like the crash test is like the 80 mile an hour. It's the 35 miles an hour one. Like, <laughs> I do oh, like no. 35 out of my driveway. Like, yeah. There's a there's a kid in the back seat at one point. A, a crash dummy, mm-hmm. obviously, and it hits this wall, and you see this kid's head travel like five feet within the interior of the car hitting everything along the way (laughs) it looks amazing like impressively bad (laughs) like like they disregarded everything they knew about physics and safety and we're just like space truck speaking of elon so we're at our smoking spot at the hotel in vegas and there's like construction workers in the like the 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 middle area where they they loop around to drop people off in the front entrance and there's a a big circular grass area whatever the fuck it is like there it's middle of the night and there's construction workers working on something they got flashlights on I'm like what are they working on and it looks straight up like the the drill modules from ninja turtles that shredder and the goons used to drill through the earth and then we realize it's the yeah bo- those are fucking real man it's the crazy boring drill because they're adding more stops to the the tesla loop in vegas 
So we saw the big oh, actual fucking yeah. like total recall drill. And dudes are just out there with flashlights. I don't know why the fuck it's not working. <laughs> I tried tweeting at Elon. He didn't answer. He blocked me. <laughs> oh, fucking wild, dude. Love it. So yeah, let us know what you want us to put on the votes for movies and whatnot, because there's nothing but options. There's so oh, fucking yeah. many of them. Um, We're going to have to do another uh, holiday bullshit you know. episode as well. Oh yeah, we absolutely. didn't get to do our Thanksgiving so, one, so I'm, gonna... I'm I got blue balls. I got holiday bullshit blue balls. We'll have to do that soon. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, fucking take, taking it real easy, in December. Yeah, as, maybe you know, we'll, as God intended. Maybe we'll stream some Fortnite nights with the new season. Yeah, yeah. play it by ear. Everybody's busy. Everybody's got shit to do, but nothing I want to do during the holidays than spend time with my friends and my family. And that's you guys. Perfect. Yep. So, yeah, on that note, God bless us, everyone. <laughs> we'll be back next week. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central at YouTube.com slash Panels on Pages for Jason Nice, Jose Guzman, wherever he may be. He's here in spirit. Uh, we, no, we know where Jose is. He's R.I.P. Jose. Uh, Come on, the <laughs> shit <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's Reverend Jose's two and three. Love We're you. here. We're stomping all over Lee's outro. <laughs> You fucking Google ass bitch. You fucking Google something. Holy shit. You fucking Google ass bitch. I didn't want to say it. What are you, some kind of bitch? Whoa, 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 whoa. You fucking Google ass bitch. Why you keep bugging us, you two? You fucking Google ass bitch. That's it. Show's over. We're done. See you next Tuesday. <laughs>